Hey everybody, uh, Bill from MadMount.com. Um, I just wanted to go over a little bit of what goes into a uh, into a good controller. And one of the main things about that is balance. Now I'm gonna go numerically here. Uh, this controller is for the Inspire one. One of the original uh, drones that I started flying with professionally. And this is the controller. And as you can see, uh, DJI doesn't like to change their controller design. There's a reason why. It's because it fits the hand nicely. Now, a tip, one tip for flying, um, a lot of people when they first get a drone, they wanna fly thumbs. This is the uh, thumbs, I actually started with thumbs. And uh, it's not as precise. And the reason I wanna bring this up is flying with a drone and getting a professional shot requires precision movements. This means that you have a relaxed hand, it's not trying to uh, flex at all, meaning these muscles right here are not trying to hold the controller tight. You can actually just kind of have it sitting there very easily and then so you let it sit into your hand, reach up there and move those sticks ever so gently to get a precision movements. So that's really important and the reason that your hand doesn't have to flex is because their middle point's about right there. See, it wants to uh, be there right in the center, and that's good, because look where your hand goes. It's halfway onto the controller, so that means it doesn't want to go forward or back. It's kind of just sitting right there. See how I can just kind of open up my hand and it doesn't fall forward or back? That's important, I'm just doing this. Just right there like that, and you can see. All right, so that's the Inspire 1. Notice there's uh, no screen on this controller either. That'll be important later. All right, then came the Mavic, which is kind of like a prosumer level drone. It uh, it actually shoots really, really well. I've used it on a couple of professional things where we just needed to steal a couple uh, aerial shots, but not really a aerial focus thing. We didn't have red, uh, you know, red cameras or Aries or C300s on the ground. We had to match up to with a really superior camera. If you're shooting on the ground, maybe your output is uh, Instagram, like this 10-day uh, shoot I just did. We traveled all over the country, and we need, we went to Dallas, Chicago, uh, shot in LA, DC, and uh, this was perfect for it because we we're outputting to to uh, Instagram. So the controller for this one is, of course, the infamous fold-out controller, right? So it goes like this, and the way that they intended was. Throw your cell phone in here. Let me turn this off here. And uh, I can't really, there we go. Get your cell phone in here and use it like this, which is a pretty cool compact design, but it's not exactly uh, professional. So the professional setup that I'm talking about is we have a full size iPad. So I'm gonna put a Mav mount in here. I'm gonna show you how that works. Let's get this guy out of the way here. Only so much room on the table. So let's get the uh, iPad mini here. Now what I've done is kind of mimicked exactly what the uh, Inspire One has. And I haven't shown you this one yet. And it's a larger tablet, but here's the Inspire Two. Same idea. I'll tilt that up correctly. Uh, these ones are gonna be exactly the same balance, right? Because it's a right over that center there. So you have that weight dropping. Now uh, what's nice is when you have something like this, you can actually use a professional hood and as it comes off, it's going to sit there just right. Oh, one of my lights is dying. <laughs> Little strobing there. Sorry, I'm just doing this on the fly because I wanted to get this video out because there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there. What a properly balanced uh, controller feels like and uh, I may not even edit that out so um, You've got this correct You've got this one correct and then Now and you know with the ability to use a professional hood you have a Mavic controller with the uh, Full-size iPad Where's the balance point right there in the center see how you know, I hope you can kind of see it from uh, from the screen there. But you see how it's in the center? That means that the iPad is directly over where your hand's gonna be, because look, 
it's right on there, okay? Now this allows it to sit in your hand nicely. It's not wanting to fall forward or anything. And you can actually use your hands to do precision movements just like I'm using with the Inspire 1 and the Inspire 2. And you can put a pro hood on it. The reason that I know that this is correctly balanced is you know, you pull this out of here, it sits there, right? Now, if this was incorrectly balanced, let's say, um, let's say that you thought that this screen made any difference, which it doesn't. I'm gonna get into that in a second too. That's a, that's a major thing that people kinda got slipped up on, uh, especially new pilots who hadn't flown in a Phantom 1, 2, 3, 4, the Inspire 1, the Inspire 2, and uh, just got the Mavic, and we're like, ah, this screen's really important, but it's not at all. So, now you've got uh, some designs where they want to put the screen out here. Now why would you do that? Why would you ever do that? Because that's just going to make, want, make it want to fall forward like that. Because the weight is too far out. It needs to be over the screen. Well, DJI put this little screen on here. And they put some information here. And the only reason that I can think that they did that is originally they thought that people were going to fly the Mavic without a screen. They were gonna fly it like this. That's why it looks like a little remote, like a uh, video game controller. And if they, you fly like this, yeah, you can use the screen on here and you know how far away it is. Um, honestly, you're just flying line of sight most of the time because you don't have a uh, visual on it. But nobody's flying that way. Everybody's got access to a cell phone or a, uh, or a tablet. So it makes this screen absolutely worthless, redundant, uh, because everything that you need on here is on here in a better format. It's uh, easier to read, it's laid out better. It's just absolutely superior in every way to looking at this. So what did uh, having this screen here um, cause? Well, people thought you needed to see both screens. It's kind of like having a car that has a, uh, like a small OEM boost gauge and then a really nice boost gauge like on, in a holder. Um, that's this right here, right? So yeah, your OEM thing has some information, but you want that like, that computer sitting right in front of you with all the information there, that's gonna give you a better shot. So forget about this. And if you see a design that's kind of putting it off to the back or something like that, make sure they balanced it with some weight out in the front so you don't have this thing constantly trying to fall out of your hands forward. Cause that's gonna make you grip tighter because you don't want it to go forward. And then that means all of these muscles through here are tight so when you're trying to do these firm, you know, these nice smooth movements, instead you're gripping onto the thing, keeping it from falling forward. And with the mini, it's bad. With the 9.7, it's even worse. The one on, can't really see it, but with the 9.7, it's worse. And if you have a 12.9, forget about it. So the myth that this screen was kind of deep, it was like necessary. Uh, it's kind of debunked in the new uh, Spark. So we've got the Spark Drone gets its uh, premier here. Here's the Spark Drone and its controller. <laughs> so new I haven't even taken off the uh, thing there. Look, they don't even have it. How are people flying this safely without all the information? Because it's right here on the screen. It's right here on the Inspire 2 screen. It's right here on the Inspire 1 screen. It's right over here on the Mavic with the screen. <laughs> um, I don't know. You, it's, uh, it's just frustrating because there's bad information out there and I want people to be able to fly well. Um, I will not tell, let my students use um, the screen on the Mavic. When they're flying on here, I want them to be flying relaxed. They need to have their hands nice and they need to be uh, flying with fingers like this, making slow, precise, cinematic movements. Now I know everybody's, not everybody's like trying to be a professional, I get that. But there's no reason to hamstring yourself from getting good footage. You know, if you're doing the, the family barbecue or you're flying out on vacation or something, why would you hamstring yourself with, bad, uh, with a bad design? So that's why I made everything professional the way I use it. Because if you look at this, we put this here, you know, and you got, let's put a, let's put a iPad in there. All right, if you look at this, I'm set up to do professional stuff here. And, sorry, this is over on the floor. You can put a hood on here, and look, the balance point is directly straight down. So you're able to use a professional hood. And, if you want to go full hood the way we do on set, 
you know, I'm not going to build this whole thing right now, but you can end up having a professional hood. And look, it's still balanced right over that center point. Why? Because it's really important. And now you can see this is set up just like that. Just like how we shoot the movies and commercials and all sorts of stuff. So I hope, uh, I hope this has helped to understand you know, a little bit about controller design um, and why things are the way they are. Uh, there's so much information about it. If you notice, this looks just like a, <laughs> very similar to an Xbox controller. Why? Because there's been years and years and years of people playing video games and learning that this is what it's supposed to be like.